The central banks and the treasury departments in the United States and the UK are intentionally flipping their own yield curves right now, and I can't figure out just what the heck they're up to. What's up guys, I'm Nobody Special, and last week the story broke that the US Treasury was considering a buyback of treasury bonds, and then yesterday the story broke that the UK Treasury was sending 11 billion pounds to the Bank of England in order to offset losses from its recent guilt buying binge that it went on in order to bail out the country's pension system. Now both of these cases involve governments borrowing money, taking out new debt in order to pay off old debt. Now typically when a person or a company takes out new debt to pay off old debt, they do it for one of two reasons. Number one, they either get a lower interest rate on the new debt that they're taking out so their net interest payments go down, or number two, to give themselves more time before they have to pay that debt back. But in both cases here, that's not what's happening. What Janet Yellen is proposing at the Treasury is to take out new debt at a higher interest rate that matures even sooner in order to pay off long-term debt at a lower interest rate. And what the UK just did with their 11 billion pound transfer to the BOE is they did the same thing. They're borrowing short-term at a higher interest rate in order to pay off long-term debt at a lower interest rate. So it's left me sitting here scratching my head. Just what on earth are these people thinking? Now first, a little refresher on what the yield curve is and what an inverted yield curve means. I've included chapters down below. If you want to skip this part, you won't hurt my feelings. Now, the yield curve is a graph that shows you the interest rate on a debt instrument versus the duration of maturity of that instrument. For example, a three-month bond will yield this much interest, a six-month bond this much, a 10-year bond even more. Now, a healthy yield curve looks something like this. The further out you go, the longer term that debt instrument is, the higher the interest rate. And that makes sense, right? You would typically want a higher interest rate in exchange for locking up your money for a longer period of time. So the further out on the yield curve you get, the longer the duration of that bond, the higher interest you should earn. That's what a healthy yield curve looks like. But it doesn't always work that way. Sometimes, for whatever reason, the market sees there might be some risk in the short term. They might say, hey, something bad is on the horizon. There's an economic storm brewing. And so I think there's more risk in the short-term stuff. And when that happens, the interest rate on the short-term debt actually goes higher than the long-term debt. That's known as an inversion of the yield curve. And every major economic catastrophe going back as far as the eye can see has been preceded by an inversion in the yield curve. An inversion in the yield curve, as far as economic indicators go, that's like Jim Cantore showing up in your backyard to talk about how bad the hurricane might be something really bad is about to happen. Now, right now, the yield curve in the United States looks like this. Now, forget the ultra short-term stuff because that's being held down by the Fed funds rate. But if you look, the three-month, the six-month, the one-year, the two-year, all paying higher interest rates than the longer duration bonds are. And over in the UK, we have something similar with the short-dated debt is paying a higher interest rate than the long-term stuff. So the last thing any treasury secretary or any finance minister or any central banker ever wants to see is an inverted yield curve. That means bad things are coming. And with that, we are going to shrink my big melon of a head. And here we go in Reuters. This is dated six days ago. U.S. Treasury asks major banks if it should buy back bonds. The U.S. Treasury Department is asking primary dealers of U.S. Treasuries, i.e. banks, whether the government should buy back some of its bonds to improve liquidity in the $24 trillion market. Liquidity in the world's largest bond market has deteriorated this year, partly because of rising volatility as the Federal Reserve rapidly raises rates to bring down inflation. So we're all familiar with what the Federal Reserve has been doing. They've been raising interest rates and they've been engaged in quantitative tightening, i.e. the destruction of money. This has resulted in way more sellers of long-term U.S. Treasury bonds than there are buyers. So what the Treasury is talking about doing here, Janet Yellen wants to come in and she wants to buy some of those long-term Treasuries, which is the polar opposite of what the Fed is trying to do to fight inflation. That's a whole other story, but it's the way Yellen is going to get her hands on that money to begin with. That's what I don't get. See, the government is operating at a loss here, so we're not talking about tax revenues being spent to buy back this debt. We're talking about the Treasury borrowing even more money to buy back these long-term Treasuries. Now, let's assume for a minute that they're not going to be selling the same Treasuries they're trying to buy back. That would be counterproductive. So by process of elimination, they could only be selling the short-term Treasuries in order to buy the long-term Treasuries. And when you factor in the relationship between bond prices and bond yields, what that means is they'll be driving down the interest rates on the long end 
and they'll be driving up the interest rates on the short end. In other words, they'll be making the inversion in the yield curve even worse. And I can't imagine any scenario where a central banker or a treasury secretary would intentionally flip their own yield curve or make the existing inversion in that yield curve even worse. That is inviting economic disaster, and that's exactly what Janet Yellen is proposing right now. And over in the UK, they're doing something very similar. You may recall back on September 28th, the UK pension system was just hours away from collapse, and so the Bank of England had to step in. They printed money and started buying the UK's 10-year gilt. They were doing exactly what Janet Yellen was proposing, buying the long end of the yield curve in order to suppress interest rates. And then yesterday, this story broke. Here in Bloomberg, UK Treasury to transfer £11 billion to the Bank of England to cover QE losses. The UK Treasury is set to transfer more than £11 billion or $12.4 billion to the Bank of England this fiscal year to cover projected losses in its bond buying program, according to a person familiar with the situation. So the UK's central bank is losing money on this bailout of the pension system. And in order to pay for those losses, the UK Treasury is sending £11 billion to the Bank of England. The question is, where is the Treasury getting that money? And just like here in the States, the UK is operating at a deficit. So once again, we're going to make the assumption that the UK Treasury isn't going around and just selling the same 10-year gilts that the BOE is buying. So by process of elimination, they must be selling the short end of the curve. And when you sell short-term bonds, you drive down the price of those bonds and you drive up the interest rate. So the net result of these combined actions from the Bank of England and now the UK Treasury is interest rates on the long end of the curve are going lower and interest rates on the short end of the curve are going higher. In other words, they have further flipped or further inverted their own yield curve. And once again, I am just left here scratching my head why would anybody do this on purpose? Well, according to the core principle of modern monetary theory, a government with a fiat currency can and should print as much money as they need to... Listen, we're not doing this right now, Kay. You said inflation would be transitory, and it wasn't. I apologize for my Keynesian evil twin, folks. He's just been unbearable since Ben Bernanke won the Nobel Prize. So the reason why the U.S. wants to do this buyback and the reason why the Bank of England started buying their 10-year gilts all had to do with liquidity. There's just way more sellers of these long-term bonds right now than there are buyers. When that happens, it drives down the price of the bonds and it drives up the interest rates. In other words, the long end of the yield curve is starved for liquidity. And when you're starved for liquidity in the bond market, very bad things happen to your economy. So I understand what the governments are trying to do here on the long end of the curve. They're trying to provide more liquidity. They're trying to suppress those interest rates. But to finance those operations by selling the short end of the curve, by borrowing short duration debt, just doesn't make any sense to me. Actually, governments don't need to sell bonds or even borrow money at all. They could just create as much money out of nothing as they need to. Kay, if you don't let the grown-ups talk, I swear I'm cutting your allowance. I'm throwing soup on your Star Wars poster. He's getting worse every day. So long story short, these actions that are being taken in the Bank of England and the UK Treasury, and then here in the States with what Janet Yellen is proposing, what these governments are doing is attempting to provide some short-term liquidity in their long-duration government bonds, but they're doing it at the expense of further inverting their own yield curves. Is this reckless? Is this stupid? Is it short-sighted? I honestly don't know what their end game is here. I cannot imagine any scenario where this benefits anyone. So I have two reasons for making this video. First, I wanted to explain to you what's going on. And the second reason is this is an open invitation to anybody out there, anybody on FinTwit, anybody on financial YouTube. Can you please explain to me what the end game is for these treasuries, for these central banks right now? What are they trying to do by further inverting their own yield curve? Anybody out there, George Gammon, Greg Manorino, Ninja, Financial Prepper, Heresy Financial, any of you guys, let me know in the comments. Do a reaction video or come on the channel and explain it to all of us. And you folks watching at home, run this video by some of your favorite financial YouTubers and see what they come up with. At this point, I'm at a loss for words and I'm open to suggestions on what you guys think is going on. And the only thing I can think of is they are just desperately trying to buy themselves a couple of more days before something really bad happens in markets. And if you want to know just how bad things could get, you can check out this video I did a couple of weeks ago about how this coming financial crisis is unlike anything the world has ever seen. Until next time, live small and dream big.